All right, let's start over here with what we know. We've got essentially a rectangular prism. We've got a square base. We'll call those dimensions X by X. And we don't know yet the height. Um, but we do know that the volume, which would be the area of the base times the height, is 16. And at some point, having two variables here is going to be a problem. So we can use that equation to solve for H in terms of X. So our height is going to be 16 over X squared. All right, so what are we trying to accomplish? We want to minimize the cost of materials. Well, the materials essentially are the surface area of this thing. So if we start with surface area, there's four faces, front, back, left, and right, that are all X by H rectangles. You know, we got four sides that are X by H. And then you have the top and the bottom that are X squared. So surface area, we've got four sides that are X by H and two sides that are X squared. Now we got a little extra information up here in our problem. The material used to make the base and the material used to make the top costs twice as much per square foot as the sides. So we're just gonna double that area. So our cost function is 4XH plus four times X squared. And again, before we start taking derivatives and, and trying to solve this, we've got the issue of having two different variables. So, you know, back to here, we're going to take this 16 over X squared and plug it in in place of this H. And if we simplify that a little bit, 4X times 16 over X squared would be 64 over X. Um, I like using negative exponents just because it makes it easier to, to do our power rule. So now we've got a cost function. In order to minimize that cost function, we need critical points. And critical points means we need to know when the derivative is equal to zero. Critical points also include anything that would make the function undefined. You know, and in this case, we can't divide by a zero, but we can kind of disregard that because it, you know, it wouldn't make any sense to have a box with sides zero feet long. All right, so let's take our derivative. So the derivative of, of C, you know, if we apply our power rule here, we get negative 64 X to the negative second. And if we apply our power rule here, we get eight X. So there's our derivative. Uh, now, just for the purposes of solving the equation, I'm gonna switch up from my negative exponent and go back to a fraction. So negative 64 over X squared plus eight X is equal to zero. Add that negative term over to the other side of the equation multiply both sides of the equation by x squared. So now we've got all our x's over here on the left. 8x cubed is equal to 64. Divide by 8, x cubed equals 8. Take the cube root of both sides, x equals 2. Now, a lot of times on these max and min problems, you know, we can tell from context if this is a, a minimization or a maximization, but it doesn't hurt to double check. You know, so, you know, the way we check, you plot that critical point on a number line, Again, our number line starts at, at zero. You can't have a box with negative lengths. So let's pick a value between zero and two. You know, let's say one. If we were to plug one into our derivative, negative 64 over one plus eight times one, that's a negative number. So our derivative's negative there. If we plug in a number bigger than two, let's plug in a four. So four squared would be 16 negative 64 over 16 would be negative four, but eight times four is 32. So negative four plus 32, that's a positive value. So that tells us that if the derivative is negative, the function's decreasing. And then if the derivative's positive, the function's increasing. So that tells us that this is a, a minimum here at two. So our minimum occurs when X is two, they ask for the, all the dimensions. So H again is 16 over X squared. So 16 over two squared, 16 over four, H is four. So that's our dimensions. We've got a two by two base and a height of four is the cheapest box given our cost constraints with a volume of 16.